Welcome to the Dubcast with Dubside. This is a special guest edition of the Dubcast. Actually, today it will be two special guests. In the Washington, D.C. area, there is a group called the Chesapeake Paddlers Association. And every spring, they run an event known as SK-102, which is the premier introductory sea kayaking event in the area. The two key people involved in that event are David Compton and Teresa Pendleton. All right. I am in Virginia in... Where, where's the nearest town here? Mineral. Mineral. Mineral, Virginia. And this is the location on Lake Anna where an event called SK-102 is held. And I am talking to the owners of the property where that's been held for how many years now? 27, David. Really? Cat, do you know? Oh, oh, wow. okay. 25th. Wow. 25. Let's see. Yeah. B25, yes. Right. So I have David and Teresa. And uh, thank you for taking a moment to explain to me. So tell me tell me about you, you, you got this property at some point, and that was and soon after that you had the first event here? Well, soon after we bought, we bought November 1st of whatever year, I don't even, whatever year that is. 1997. And the right. following late summer, Brian Blankenship put an email on the list server, which okay. is how we used to communicate events for trips and ask questions about equipment and stuff like that. And Brian was inviting people to paddle at the state park in the warm water. Okay. And the state park is that not on warm water like we are. We are on of the, this lake land. Uh, this Anna. lake okay. in it. Yeah. We are on the discharge side of the power plant, so the water coming out of the power plant warms up this uh -huh. area. And, and so, and so that's that warming action happens all year round, right? Yes, all year round. And, and the, the event yeah. we're talking about happens in April. April, right? Or May? Well, it happens now in April, but that yeah. first time that people came. Uh, was about eight people that all came from yeah. Maryland and Northern Virginia. And because I wrote Brian, I said, Brian, that's the water over at the state park is not warm, but ours is, and you're welcome to come. Uh -huh. And so they camped for the weekend, and those, I don't even remember, there's still a couple of people who come from that first group hatched this idea of doing a workshop in the spring when people are eager to get out on the water, but the water's too cold. Uh -huh. So the next spring, I think there was 20 some people, David? Something like that, yes. And we ate Saturday, it was so small a group, we ate Saturday evening at a Chinese restaurant in Louisa. Oh, yeah? Right. We did that two years in a row. And then it got too big for the Chinese restaurant. Right. And Brian was the organizer, right. I mean, what so we, this this is this was done through CPA uh, Ches yeah, Chesapeake Powers Association, okay. which I guess they have a long history in the here in the Washington D.C., Maryland, Virginia, yeah. Delaware area. Yes, and okay. for many years it was nothing more than a telephone list, oh, yeah. and that was maintained okay. by by one of the the people. And you paid ten dollars at first; it was five dollars a year, and you got a newsletter. And uh, okay, wow. and so these they were all part of that Chesapeake Paddlers, and then. Uh, as use of email and the internet became... That's right. We're talking the 90, late 90s here, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> early versions of the technology thing we have now. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Brian was doing all the coordinations. He was getting volunteers from the club who were the better paddlers mm -hmm. uh, to be his teachers. Mm -hmm. And the fee that was charged to the students was just to cover uh, our expenses and uh, things mm -hmm. like make there was making copies of various things uh, the portable toilets that we would so, take. so for the first year eight people I it sounds like it quickly got grew 
grew that, more. So, it went from a, a group paddle, a peer paddle, okay, to this. Let's educate people who so are. So we're up to like 20, 30, 40 people now, or mm -hmm. and okay. and it just kept growing, and and it soon had. Well, it always had a wait list. Really. And there was so much oh. interest in. There wasn't any other venue in spring in yeah. the northern Virginia or Maryland area because the okay. waters are so cold. Ah. So, yeah. but, pe but people are tempted to be out on the water when the temperature is in the 70s, but the water is yeah. in the 40s. Air right? temperature 70, I mean, yeah, the waters went very cold, yeah. Yes, so mm -hmm. they thought it would be, and that's really one of the things that, that CPA was known for was its safety in cold water. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's how it evolved to, to be in April right. and to make it as late as possible. Uh, yeah, so, so for example, right, right now, today it's January 16th and this, yes, this evening, the, the water, the, the air temperature was in the thirties and now it's up to 43 and the air, the water temperature down there is right, what right now? You got a thermometer down there. I have a uh, thermometer in the fish finder. I recorded Close to 70 last week. Water temperature 70 degrees. I think degrees. it has, yeah. with the colder temperature, I think it has dropped below that. It's in the 60s 60 somewhere now. now. But 60 degree water in January is, is fine water to paddle in if you're, yes. <laughs> if you're going to practice dre rolling or something. Yeah, right. If you dress for it, yeah. you dress you for dress the air for temperature the air. Yeah. Yeah. and not for the water temperature. Yeah. Or wow. you dress for the water, yeah. to, whichever one's the coldest is what you need yeah. to dress for. And so, yeah. and in April, late April, we've the air temperature will vary a lot. Yeah. Uh, it yeah. can be we had a very cold event, I guess three or four or four years ago, that yeah. it never went over forty five in yeah. the air temperature. Yeah. But the water temperature was seventy five. Yeah. And so people wanted to stay in the water and I not... I think I remember that one, yeah. <laughs> you, you didn't want to get out. I'd stand in the water and teach rolling. I'll just stay there, yeah. Right. And uh -huh. so, But it can also be as warm as 85. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and then you get into the opposite effect, or that by late afternoon, it's mid-afternoon, yeah. that, that the instructors or people who are wearing dry suits can be over overheated. Yeah. So uh -huh. it's yeah. it's almost it's what what is the best and the farmer the joke is that the farmers call us to find out when SK one oh two is going to be held so that they can get their seed in the ground because it's gonna rain. Oh yeah. Well, I, <laughs> I can recall a lot of rain here during the weekends. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, so so typically it, you have a, a, a maximum of say how many how many people? Well, that has varied through yeah. the years. Um, at one point, it got really high because a prom a promise had been made. There is an SK one hundred and one now. Yeah. When it first started, it was there was not a class of SK one hundred and one. Okay. It was called one hundred and two because it was. The students who came should be, have at least a little experience on the water. It shouldn't be yeah. the first time in a kayak. Mm -hmm. But now SK 101 is held in March in, it's closer to Washington, D.C. And it focuses, it's a classroom environment and it focuses on your equipment. So it's not on the water, it's a classroom. Okay. It's a classroom. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, so a, somebody made a promise that anybody who was in the class for that was guaranteed a spot. SK-102. Yeah, okay. And but but you, you have to do SK-101 if you're going to come no, to SK-102. No, no, that's not, no. Okay. That's not, oh, uh, right. no, but, because <laughs> uh, they are two separate yeah. events, and two separate some events people don't, okay. some people don't need or want 101 or classroom, okay. and it's sort, uh, so that year we had 160 people with instructor 160, 160. Okay. Uh, wow. I think now we always have cancellations because people have true. Yeah. emergencies and there are some people you know if, if there's thunderstorms predicted there's always going to be a few more people canceled because yeah 
they don't think there's the event will go on or they don't want to be out on the water yeah. when thunderstorms or they don't want to camp in thunderstorms yeah. so um but there was i think 154 people right. on the property and so so how, how many acres is this here uh what we have is about two and a half acres okay yeah and then is when the numbers went over 60 we needed more parking yeah Okay. Uh, people used to park down at their tents, oh, and wow. <laughs> and uh, and then it became we need more tent space. So it was like, okay, you can drop your stuff off in the camping area and drop your if it's dry, yeah. you can drop your boat at the lake, and then you parked up here in our yard, in yeah. our driveway, our front yard, backyard. Uh, yeah. But then it got too many cars, so we got permission yeah. from our neighbor, who has a lot that doesn't have anything on it, and. So it's our parking lot, and there's mm -hmm. a walkthrough between. We have a row of cedars between us, and there's a walkthrough yeah. very much closer to the lake that they can take their equipment through. Yeah. And and the registration is is right down there. Yeah. And so, but mm -hmm. after that, 155 people is too many people. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Even with getting the neighbor's property. So they <laughs> generally now, I think they're trying to hold it to about a hundred, yeah. including instructors. Mm -hmm. And it just makes for a better yeah. event because when it was yeah. so many more people, there was a real split between instructor staffs and staff and the students. Okay. So the students didn't get to know very many people. Yeah who mm -hmm. were the long, you know, long-term members of CPA. Yeah. Some, some of the people, you know, they didn't feel as comfortable about asking to use somebody's boat because that's one of the things that the coordinator always offers up or people always offer up. If you see a boat you want to paddle, ask around to find out who the owner is and yeah. ask permission. And, mm -hmm. and it is a great way to demo because yeah. there's all different brands, yeah. varieties. And this, uh, and this, this is kayaking, sea kayaking per se, not necessarily Greenland kayaking or surf sea kayaking, all those, you know, wing paddles, you got right. Euro paddles, you got everything. Yes, right? everything. Yeah. And, and then there's, now you have to picture that a lot of the people who are taking the class on Saturday, yeah. they're not, they're relatively new paddlers. Mm -hmm. So they're pretty tired for mm -hmm. Sunday, and yeah. so instead of offering on the water, we've learned over the years what works and doesn't work. And I say we, it's really the coordinators, it's other members yeah. of CPA right. who make this happen. We handle the site logistics, mm -hmm. and we uh, put up signs. And it's, we started before yeah. you had GPS, and mm -hmm. it took several years for our county, our addresses to even be on anybody's GPS. Wow. So we used to post signs at all the major intersections so that they know where it's going to Coming from the north primarily, but uh, yeah. also from the west a little bit. And then we arrange for the portable toilets mm -hmm. and uh, we mark off areas where people are to park and where they're to put their boats, you know, mm -hmm. it's just it's just with survey tape yeah. and stakes. And there's usually volunteers that help with that because we can uh, do it on the. You can't put up the survey tape ahead of time because the wind will stretch it and knock it over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. But my my husband David, I'm doing all the talking. You're I'm doing a fine work. job. <laughs> <laughs> I think you were getting ready to say that on Sunday there's a lot of classes that don't involve physical stuff on the water. How yeah. to make a Greenland paddle, yeah. uh, what equipment you need for overnight camping out of a kayak, uh, how to read a, a marine map and how to navigate, mm -hmm. uh, that sort of thing. Because the emphasis is still on safety to a great extent. Yeah. That is the keystone of the Chesapeake paddlers. And, and as most of us know who have done a variety of sports, is that when you're tired, 
mistakes can happen more easily. Yeah. But also, your techni technique may not be as good. And yeah. you don't really want beginners learning bad technique. Yeah. But then you will have beginners who, because of innate ability, that they are able to paddle more. Yeah. And so there is opportunities for people to paddle on Sunday. Well, then, now the times I've been here, there's a night paddle. Everybody puts lights on and they go out. And then we split up into, it used to be what, a fast group, a medium group, and a slow group. Then it was a fast group with two medium groups and a slow group. And, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Yeah, and when the numbers got big, it, it had to be that one. And yeah. that happens on Friday evening. That's right, Friday so, evening, yeah. Yeah, okay. and so the slow group can be quite big because it is going to be people who don't necessarily have the skills. Yeah. But they get the experience of going out and doing it in the dark yeah. with the proper, and they have to have the proper uh, lighting. They have to have both a yeah. flashlight to be able to, they don't have to have starboard and port lights, yeah. and then they have to have the single light that's on your boat that yeah, notifies see, everybody that's there. Yeah. And it's pretty awesome to see them out on the water up above them in yeah. the dark. I, yeah. I've i seen them from under the bridges that cross the lake. And yeah. it was like, wow, that's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, in fact, we've had comments from various neighbors asking when the event is going to be because they want to be here to see it. Because oh, yeah. not all our neighbors live here full time. Uh -huh. uh, and we do, you know, the event shares the lake with power boaters, fishermen, mm -hmm. uh, during the day, Saturday, water skiers and all. But generally, people have been very good at being careful around the kayakers. And the kayakers, of course, are mm -hmm. careful not to block the entire channel. Yeah. And so we've been able to exist very well with yeah. that. Can you think of any any particular, particularly memorable years or something interesting happened? Well, or? there was the one year that uh, the rain Saturday night were very hard. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of cars parked on the lot next door, and it has a slope down toward the lake. Yeah. And we had groups of people pushing cars up the Even hill. Life. Uh, we actually used a fixed tree wow. to uh, hook a winch to for one of the vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, and that necessitated two weekends, two work weekends after that, to try to repair the lot and oh. reseed it. Yeah, wow. Yeah, we mm -hmm. hired, one of our neighbors has a, a till on his tractor and yeah. I got approval to hire him. The ruts were so bad enough that it wasn't going to be enough to do hand stuff over on the neighbor's property. Yeah. The damage that we had on ours, we were able, uh, and it wasn't we, it was some of the instructors, two, uh, two of the instructors stayed late on Sunday and took shovels and smoothed out the worst of the ruts wow. on our property. And right. so I, I hired him, and then um, Kat Miller, who is the coordinator now, and that was the first year we'd had a work weekend, but we had work weekends. She coordinated. So work weekend is a, a, a week or two before the event. Well, well we, have, come to... we have, we do now. We now do them before. Okay. Uh, David and I are both getting older, and our trees are getting older, and there's lots of limbs that are down. Mm. And it works out well to have the crew, uh, a work crew come in and help us with that part of picking okay. up all the limbs, yeah. getting the, the sites where people are camping wow. and where the... Uh, yeah. And collecting the limbs has the added effect. It provides plenty of fuel for the bonfire that we usually have Saturday night. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, and a good time sitting around that and an impromptu yeah. band of sorts yeah. usually music, starts yeah. up. Uh -huh. And, and uh, the times I've been here, there's usually yoga in the morning. On yes. The, on the, down there. Uh, yeah. We've had a uh, few other uh, demonstrations. I'm not sure what you yeah. call it, but uh, 
rope walking where you put a slack rope. A slack line? Slack, slack line, line yeah, yeah, between yeah. two trees yeah. and then balance on it and demonstrations mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. Uh, rolling demonstrations. Mm -hmm. Dub side, who is our host here, <laughs> yes. uh, he he does a, demo, a rolling demonstration using a lighted candle. And, a candle roll, yeah, that's that one. And he narrates it. And for I'd say most of the people who are there, unless they're like repeat uh, instructors that have come multiple times, it's the first time to see that kind of. Yeah, I usually get a really good audience response from people later on saying I, they really enjoyed that. Yeah, I, I, I like I like doing demonstrations here. All right. Well, do, you, do you recall the, the first time I was here? Maligiak and I came together. Oh, okay. Remember that? No. And, I, anyway, yeah, it was it was we were he was in the D.C. area and and Brian got in touch with us and wanted us to come and we we didn't really know exactly what it was or anything, so we came sort of. <laughs> Apprehensive about because you know you can we can get talked in of various odd things, but when we got here we had a great time. It was mm -hmm. very nice. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, uh. Yeah, well, he he's he's hasn't lived in the area for many years, so I don't know if he'll ever make it back here. But I've yeah. been coming back quite on a pretty much regular basis. Yeah. Well, very you know. few exceptions. Uh, the events have uh, brought a lot of great people together, and. Mm -hmm. uh, Generally, very few headaches over the years we've had it. Right. Most right. of them have been related to weather. Okay. Uh, yeah. But that's part of the adventure of camping. And frankly, if you're going to kayak and if you're going to be out on the water, you're going to get wet. Yeah. And uh, it's it's good experience, good training, just that part of it. Yeah. <laughs> but really, the credit for the initiation and the development of SK-102 in the format that it is, it started with, with Brian Blankenship. Yeah, okay. Uh, his energy and enthusiasm uh, just carried it through. And he did it for 15 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and he found his own replacement so that he could not be the, the chief coordinator uh, but he would still continue to instruct. He would still volunteer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Catriona so, uh, Miller uh, is still the instructor, and she has recruited people to her to help with the, yeah, the, the, the registration. She said that she's the instructor. She's the organizer. She's the organizer, yeah. the coordinator for the event. Yeah. Yeah, and sorry if I said instructor. Uh, but she does help teach. Yeah. Uh, as well, which it, it's like a lot. I think it's like a lot of events. You do all the work before the event, and then the mm. event comes, and there are people who have jobs still to do, but it's all the planning and the execution beforehand makes it a success at the time. Mm -hmm. And so she's right. recruited uh, somebody who takes care of the food, which. Yeah. Um, being as far as we are from anything, we're, uh, we now have a grocery store five miles away, but that's a relatively new uh, thing in the last uh -huh. five or six years, seven years. Uh, but it, uh, you can't, it, and it's a chain, but you have to buy the food before you get to the lake. Cause you never yeah. know what's gonna be at the grocery store. Yeah. So uh, yeah. she's got somebody who helps with that. Somebody who helps do the registration, uh, which is, I guess most of it's all done online now. And mm -hmm. that then gets lists compiled. And then Katrina Miller, she asks for volunteers, for instructors. And it, it, some of the instructors are certified. And if they're not certified, then they've been reviewed by uh, CPA's leadership. Mm -hmm that they are qualified to both lead trips and to teach. And their skills are as such that they give their time for that weekend. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so, and then to marry up instructors to the students and uh, what classes are gonna be held and when they're gonna be held, what group they're gonna be yeah. in. 
is uh, done between Catriona and the person she's recruited to help her. Yeah. Right. And so we don't have to, to me that's the most difficult part. And so when people thank us or whatever, I'm like, I think we've got the easy job. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, yeah. and truly, uh, when the event closes on Sunday afternoon, there's a few people that stay behind that uh, to ensure any items that might get left. Yeah. Uh, then they take them because we are far enough away from most of the students. Uh, there's nobody down our, there. We occasionally have people come from Richmond or even right. from the Tidewater area of Virginia, Norfolk, Virginia Beach. But primarily they are uh, from the D.C. Baltimore yeah. uh, arena area. Is that you can't tell they've been here. I mean, yeah. the, the, the grass is trampled. Uh, but that's going to pop back up with a little yeah. rain and some wind blowing on it. And the trash is all picked up. Oh, yeah. It's, you know. Yeah. So we have to get it to the landfill. And, uh -huh. and then uh, the portable toilets. Uh, we have uh, the same group that we started with, uh, which are out of Charlottesville. And, and they call us or and send us emails, want to know if we're going to, during the COVID, we yeah. we missed two years not doing it, but they yeah. were emailing us wanting to know uh, uh -huh. how they could assist. And uh, and because of the ground being off, sometimes they cannot drive down to where we oh, yeah. have them put the portable toilets. And so, but, but they try to help as much as they can. And mm -hmm. then they come pick them up. Yeah. And that's about it. Right. Yeah. So. So David, I have a question for you. So the water here is warm because of the power plant just across the way there. And that's right. actually a nuclear power plant. It is a nuclear power plant, which, two which units. It, so, some people would initially say, well, isn't that kind of scary that you know, there's a nuclear power plant? Or about, but I believe you have some inside information about how safe that power plant is. I do. I've worked there for 30 years. All right. Tell, um, tell us about it. The, it's a two unit nuclear power station. Uh, the lake was built for the power station. Okay. It was impounded in the early 70s, was projected to take several years to fill because the uh, North Anna River and Pamunkey Creek and a few other small tributaries to it are, really don't have much flow. A hurricane yeah. came through and it filled up very quickly wow. once they got the dam put in place. Right. Uh, but as far as the nuclear power station goes, the water that comes through from the other side of the lake flows through heat exchangers at the nuclear power station and then back out on our side, which which what provides us the warm water. Yeah. Those heat exchangers, you've got the lake water flowing on one side of a tube, the water from the plant coming through another side or coming through the tubes. That is repeated three times before you get anywhere near anything that's radioactive. Three different exchanges. Three okay. different exchanges. Yeah. Right. And uh -huh. every one of those exchanges and the water out here has detectors on it. If there's even a hint of any radiation, okay. then the alarms go off and actions are uh -huh. taken. Uh, there has never been any hint of that. Really? So in your 30 uh, the years, there's never, the, the alarms have never gone off for real? It's, no. Wow. Uh, the one time that there was some concern, there had been some, uh, there are wells drilled in the area uh, where they sample groundwater to make sure there's no leakage into groundwater. Okay. Uh, one year, uh, there was some detection of tritium. Uh -huh. Well, tritium is a naturally occurring radioactive Yeah item. You find it in almost every groundwater. Okay. But anyway, it, it was reported in the newspapers and some of the event uh, staff, I don't think staff so much as students, potential students, were asking questions. Uh, so the club uh, funded me to take samples of the lake. And, dr and our drinking and water. And our drinking water, our so well. It's well water from here. It's okay. well water. 
Uh, and I located an independent testing company in Fredericksburg that sent the samples off to uh, Huntsville, Alabama to an independent testing agency. Okay. They tested it for everything they could think of, uh, but with the emphasis on anything radioactive. Yeah. That agency questioned whether I had the samples right because the lake water was as pure as the well water and there were no contaminants of any sort in the well water. Uh -huh. So they thought I had sent them two samples from a very pure well water. Wow. Uh, right. So uh, the lake water is not a concern as far as mm -hmm. the nuclear power station. Right. Uh, yeah. And uh, it gives us the benefit of having warm water a couple months earlier than the other side of the lake, the yeah. public, what we usually call the public side of the lake. Okay. And we have warm water on up into the end of October. Yeah. Uh, we have water skiers out here year round. Mm -hmm. Admittedly, this time of year, they're wearing uh, wetsuits. But yeah. there's a slalom course in a cove across from our uh, shoreline here that right. they practice on. They're professional water skiers and they practice on that oh. year round. All right. All right. All right. Well, thank you for uh, taking the time to talk to me. And um, at some point in the future, I'll have this be, I'll edit this down and it'll be on the, the Dubcast with Dubside. Oh, I look forward to that. It's a pleasure talking with you, Dubside. Right, thank you. All right. That was recorded January 15th. 2023 right in David and Teresa's living room you could hear some kitchen sounds in the background and for more information about SK 102 you can go to the Chesapeake Paddlers Association website which is cpakayaker.com that's cpa kayaker.com and SK 102 takes place usually in April every year and if you plan on going to that there's a very good chance that you'll see me there so until next time this is Dubside signing off of the Dubcast with Dubside